Welcome back. I'm excited to talk to our next guest, and I know you'll be excited to hear all about, oh, time travel, science fiction, historical fiction, a little romance. Who doesn't want all those things in our lives? Well, Melissa Kaplan is going to bring it to us, not only from the perspective of her heroine, but from her perspective of history. Incredibly, Melissa actually is an advocate for food security and hunger policy in Washington, DC, an unlikely author of a novel about time travel. However, she's also a history buff and especially the World War II era. And so it seems like a really good fit that that's where her book takes place. So Melissa Kaplan, welcome. And I'm excited to share the story of how you got to the world who would change history, the girl who would change history great title and you know i'm a big fan even sometimes if you sell a journal with a great title on the cover and let people write their own book i think that's great and that's what made me want to know more so welcome to good day thank you so much lauren it's great to be here i'm really happy to share this with our viewers and our community so tell us a little bit about you your background is so interesting Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. As you said, I live in Washington, D.C., and I've worked in advocacy um, for my entire career, working on a range of different issues. And right now, as you said, I'm working on food security and agriculture policy and trying to ensure that Congress and the government have good policies in that area. So that's my day job. But I am also an author. And yes, The Girl Who Tried to Change History is my first novel. So very excited to be here and talk about it today. So tell us what why a novel? I mean, somebody with your background, you could have written, you know, a, a a nonfiction piece about history and and the whole era. But tell us why a novel. Yeah, I've always wanted to be a writer. I mean, really going back to my childhood, it's always been a dream of mine. I've always wanted to write a book. And I sort of, you know, had a few stops and starts where I tried out different ideas. They didn't quite take. But my dream was really always to write a World War II historical fiction novel. I've always been very fascinated by that era. I've read a ton of World War II historical fiction myself. And I wanted to create something that would be sort of new and different and have a little something new to contribute to the genre. And that was sort of where I got stuck for a while because I felt that there have been so many great World War II historical fiction novels, but I also felt like the ground has been really well covered because there's so many of them. It's such a popular time period for people to set stories in. And I wanted to write a book that would be a little bit different. Like I was kind of looking for, <clears throat> excuse me, I was looking for my hook, so to speak, that would set my book apart. And one day I was actually sitting, believe it or not, in a cafe and I was just kind of letting my mind wander as I was reading my book and just thinking about, you know, life and stories. And it suddenly occurred to me, what if I was sitting here and all of a sudden a stranger came up to me and offered me the opportunity to go back in time and change the history that I'm reading about? What would I do? What would that story look like? And it, that idea really struck me, but I also kind of resisted it for a long time because I felt very strongly, you know, I'm a historical fiction writer. I'm not an author of time travel novels. I'm not a science fiction writer. This isn't really my thing. I don't know if this is something that I can pull off or if it's something that I even want to get into. So I kind of shelled the idea for several years, but it just wouldn't kind of leave me. It kept coming back to me when I kept, you know, coming to the page and trying to write. I kept thinking, well, what about that story idea? What if I wrote a story about a young woman who's given the chance to go back to the World War II era and change some of that history? So finally, I said, I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to show up at the page, see what happens, and just kind of see where the story takes me. So that's what I did. And I wrote for a year and a half. And at the end of that time, I had a novel. Wow. And how did you know you had a novel? Like, how, how did you... Tell us about your process just to make it happen after all those doubts and all those voices in your head. Yeah, I mean, I had always sort of experimented with writing different types of novels and stories. And it was just a case of finding a story where I really felt like, okay, I can follow this to the end. And some of it was a case of, I wrote, I sort of saw where the story wanted to take me and I followed it, but I did have a general idea that I wanted to explore themes of what it means to go back in time, what it means to try to change the future, and is that a good idea, and what are the unintended consequences, which shows up a lot in the story that I wrote. And so, yeah, once I had that idea, I just kind of took it and ran with it. But yeah, I had a, in terms of my practice, I literally would just sit down once or twice a week, you know, in the middle of my schedule, all the other things I was doing, and I would just write and just take time. You know, I had an outline, I had a general plan of what I wanted to have the story be about, 
but I also let myself be led in directions just sort of as I was inspired in the process of writing. So, so that's how it came together. About, tell us a little bit about the story. And then I want to ask you about time travel. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so the story is about a young woman named Vivian Riley who is a doctoral student in 2009, specializing in World War II history. She's writing her dissertation, she's stressed out, she's exhausted. And then one day a man shows up and offers her the opportunity to join a top secret government program that is using the newly discovered tool of time travel to send people, you know, ordinary people back in time to the World War II era to try to change that history and change it for the better, obviously. And Vivian accepts because she's somebody who's very passionate very much wants to make a difference and change the world and has all that sort of youthful idealism. So she accepts, she goes back in time. She's sent back to London in 1939. She begins work on rescuing Jewish children from Germany and getting them to England in order to save their lives prior to the run up to the war, because this is the particular assignment she's been given. And she also then, you know, meets people. She meets a handsome neighbor who she ends up developing a romantic relationship with, Andrew. And she also ends up befriending a young woman who works at a local bar who she finds a very strong connection with, a young woman her own age. They become good friends. And a lot of the story is about what happens when she begins to get involved in their lives and the impact that her presence in a time and place that isn't her own ends up having on these two people that she comes to love very deeply. So how much of this story do you feel is you? Definitely some of it is me. It's funny you ask that because I had a few friends who, when they read that, say, I could actually feel you coming through the pages. Like this main character definitely had traits of you that, you know, people who know me would be able to see. I think that's true. I also based it, you know, very loosely on my own family history. You know, some stories of my mother and my grandmother kind of find their way in there. So there definitely was me there in that sense. So it's fiction, but yeah, a, def a part of me as an author definitely shows up. That's amazing. And I love that. I did you ever fantasize about what would have been a different time period if you had been born? I used to do that. I always felt like oh. the, Gild the Gilded Age, if they had had indoor plumbing, would have been my era. <laughs> the I love that. Right? But yeah, for... I, I'm sure I would have been a servant and not the owner. <laughs> That's the thing. You can't completely control what your life would have been like, can you? But yeah, absolutely. For me, it was always World War II. I always imagined sort of living in the era of my grandparents, you know, living through the war. And this was as a young person, of course, I had a very romanticized view of it because, you know, you watch old movies. It's also romantic. It's good versus evil. Everybody's going off to fight the great fight. And as an adult, I realized that in reality, it was a very difficult time. I mean, one of the worst times in all of history. So I'm actually glad that I wasn't there for it, but I do love being able to dive back into the past through reading and writing and just learn about it because it is such a fascinating period. It is. And I think every period has its fascin fascination, but right now we're in an era where people who lived through that are, are dying off. The generations are shifting and people are trying to capture it in the best way. So do you feel like your audience if for this particular story and the way you've written it is everyone? Is it young adult? Is it adult? Is it, where does it fit? Yeah, I think it can really be a story for everyone. I can certainly see where older people who live through that era might be more drawn to it. Um, I think a lot of a lot of my readers were probably people my age, you know, roughly in my sort of demographic. And I think it's really something that appeals across, you know, genders across, um, you know, age brackets. I think it's really something that can appeal to everybody. So do you, this is just a, an opinion question, right? But do you think people fantasize about time travel? Like just from your experience, I'm sure you're hearing back from readers and getting feedback and do people come back and say, oh my God, I always dreamed of living in a different time. Yeah, it's interesting because not that many people have actually said that to me. But I think people find the topic very interesting. And a lot of people are drawn to stories about time travel and the whole idea of what would it be like to live in a different era? And then, of course, the questions of if you lived in that era, what would your life be like? How would it change things? How would going back in time potentially alter the future? So I think there's a lot of interest in it. Yeah. And I know that they've just had a big anniversary for the, the film Back to the Future, right? So everybody got their own little version of, of what that would look like and their reasons for going back. In your case... Vivian was trying to right some wrongs and change the future. Yes. So it wasn't just that she wanted to go back to experience the time period, but she wanted to make a difference 
for those coming after, which is something that I think we could all look at and kind of explore a little more deeply. So I really applaud you for taking that on. It's a big undertaking. Thank you. It was definitely a very interesting topic to delve into because there are so many answers. I feel like a lot of us, if given the opportunity to go back in time, would take it either for our own curiosity or because we want to help and make a difference like Vivian. But once you get into a time that's not your own and realize the impact that you can have unintentionally on the future, there's a lot that goes into that. And it's really something, it does make me wonder if we do ever invent time travel. I'm sure a lot of people will be very keen to try it, but is that really a good idea? Or is the past best left alone? Exactly. Pick your period. Don't go, don't go back and screw it up too much. So, so Melissa, how can people find the book and how can people find out more about you? Yeah. So the book is available on amazon.com. It's also available on barnesandnoble.com and bookshop. Um, I believe you can also order it through the Bold Story Press website. That's my publisher. I have my own website. It's called melissacaplanbooks.com. So you can go there. I don't sell the book directly through my website, but you can learn more about it. There's an excerpt there. You can sort of learn like where to find it. So excellent. And so since it's called Melissa Kaplan Books, plural.com, I'm assuming you've got another project coming up. I do. Yes. I'm in the process right now. Uh, my second novel is going through the editing process. So hopefully that will be published in spring of 2025. Super. And we'll look forward to having you back for that. Can you tease us a little bit on it? Like what's the story a little bit about? Yes, I can definitely tell you a little bit about it. Um, it is a story of a real life, very famous couple and how their story would have been different if one event in their lives had happened differently. So it's sort of an alternative path and alternative future for them and just kind of exploring the way that one change in their story would have changed everything for them. Well, it sounds wonderful. And thank you for sharing that because now we'll all just keep an eye out for it and we'll bring you back to talk about your new book when Fantastic. the time comes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you, Lauren. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much. And we'll be right back.